Right. Good morning, everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Charlie Shrem, and you're listening to another epic episode of The Charlie Shrem Show, where together, once or twice a week, we get to dive deep with some of Bitcoin and crypto's most influential leaders, infrastructure builders, those who are doing the hard work out there right now, building out the next level. So we get to that like watershed moment where all of a sudden we realize that the way we're doing something now is hyper different than the way that we've been doing things before. And we're on this great series talking about, you know, decentralized identity, uh, how our data and, and our identity is everything that we have going back our whole lives and how we need to protect that and going forward at the same time, figure out how we build real world applications on top of that. And today I'm really excited. We're joined by two awesome guests. Ingo Rube is joining us from the Kilt Protocol. Thank you, the founder of, of, of Kilt. Thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for inviting me again. Of course, and, and Harry Evans, you're the CTO of Amplica Labs, uh, a, a really cool company that's building out like all the, the pipes and the plumbing uh, for the decentralized social, social media world. Where are you joining us from? Uh, uh, hi, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, nice. I'm heading there tomorrow, actually. It's good times. Awesome. Um, so we, you know, Ingo and I have been talking about this subject on decentralized identity, and we kind of went into the history and, and talked on, on the background of the subject and, and, and you know why it's important and and in the world behind it but i think for our listeners sake we'd like to understand some like real world applications uh that decentralized identity will, will probably where we'll be using it first and so we feel like especially lately there's been a huge knock on the social media world between uh, uh, different companies chomping at the bit of, of Twitter and Facebook. You see Mastodon, you see Noster. We see so many of these different type of projects that kind of fizzle out and they never really work. Uh, before I get into like why they don't work, uh, I kind of want to know from you why you think decentralized social identity would work. Um, well, I mean, I think that there's a, there's, there's a couple of like uh, uh, key aspects there. So uh, the first is, I think we've seen at least hints that it would work in the past. If we look back to the early 2000s around the sort of uh, 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 creation of uh, uh, both Facebook and Twitter in the early days, you see these, uh, uh, um, they're very different than they were today. Like when Twitter came out, I don't know if you recall, folks were talking about, look, it's a new type of pipe for the internet. It's this broadcast protocol that's always been missing, right? And to the extent that Twitter operated less like a company and more like a protocol, everybody was very, very excited about it. And at some point they decided that they couldn't just fund themselves off of uh, 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 you know VC money forever and they chose a route that was you know, display advertising, et cetera, and they closed down. But for a long time, there were like a bunch of third-party apps uh, uh, being built on top of Twitter. They had this amazing mm -hmm. third-party API that everybody... And uh, uh, we saw the types of social utility that could be created by having that kind of context where you could control which apps you were interacting with, but also they could tap into this underlying graph, this underlying data set. Uh, uh, the amount of utility that could be realized was huge. And in the same sort of way, if you look at the uh, uh, early days of Facebook before their pivot to mobile and uh, 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 some of the work that they did there, um, you saw like the plugin architecture that Facebook had on the wall, right? Like you could you could plug this app in, whether it was a Zynga app that was uh, 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 you were playing with your friends, or it was something like a, 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 an app about what books you're reading or whatever, and it could leverage your social graph and you could gain utility without having to like recreate your graph over and over again. But in both of these cases, based on business model and uh, uh, technology constraints, uh, the companies pivoted and because they were platform based instead of being protocol based, uh, they were sort of unilaterally able to just change how this functions. So you saw this, this amazing potential of, I could apply social in all these different use cases in uh, uh, shopping, in gaming, in uh, uh, even in like 
finance and other things like that, uh, uh, where you where you see people trying to do that again today, but I could take my existing graph, tap into it, use it, do all these amazing things. And I really, uh, uh, I really think that that's a hint at where social could go. I think that social has been a uh, 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 really sort of like tamped down and constrained, if you will, from an industry perspective into um, what, what, what we talk about at uh, Amplica is destination social networking. I go to this place. This is the place I go to communicate with my friends. I can't bring my friends along with me when I go to do all the other things in the internet. Yes. The rest of the internet is an empty is an empty shopping mall and there's one cafe I can go to to talk to all of my friends at. And I think that I think that there's there's so much more potential there. There's there there's there's this this need, this desire, this demand almost for like a a social layer to the internet. And a key critical component to 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 that sort of thing is having a a unified understanding of what identity is because of course the basis of social is people and the ability to have a social graph means that you're tying individuals together. So what's the representation of the individual? How are they connected? How can that data be used? Who's in control of that data at different points in time? Relationship so. mapping too, like mapping relationships from person to person, from business to, to perspective. So you think the, <clears throat> so we've, we've identified the problem and that's when these things become, by the way, that's one of the best definitions of like, protocol versus platform. So for people to understand, like, especially <laughs> you have now, and now I, I think we understand better where Kilt protocol kind of, kind of falls into this architecture is that like that social layer that needs to go across all these, uh, all these different places, uh, you want to be able to take that with you. And I think, uh, Ingo, is that kind of where you're, where you're thinking too, as, as it relates to a definition of protocol and platform? Yeah, definitely. So, but uh, so I think what what Web three in total does is bringing things from platforms to protocols. That's the the fundamental idea that okay. was that was coined for the Web three. So, Web three is identity, decentralized identity. It is social graph, decentralized social graph. It is uh, ownership. Of course, decentralized ownership, NFTs, that's the NFT part, uh, the, the ownership part. It is payment, uh, more Bitcoin right? rather than banks, right? This, yeah. is, this is also decentralized. So we're taking all the things where we had the, uh, where we had the uh, platforms before and moving them into decentralized protocols. That's the idea of the Web3. And if we put everything together, then we have the perfect world of the Web3. And this is why we started to work with Amplica um, pretty early on. I think we're working for together for a year now or something um where we saw where we saw they are building the decentralized social graph so how the people actually hang together where the the connections between the people are or and the businesses and what we do we give every single one of them a decentralized identity and this together actually is the power of web3 we have to cooperate we cannot do this one by one we have to use our protocols uh, and vice versa right so we using the dsmp which is the protocol where uh Amplica is based on which is uh, theirs and they're using kilt protocol so that together we actually build something great and the and and this is actually the, very, very important because when you look back at Facebook, why is Facebook so damn big and so damn um, um, yeah, dangerous, basically? Uh, it is because they not only have a social graph, they have the social graph and the identity. They are identity providers. If you log into a new service on the internet today, you can push a button which basically says log in with Facebook. So you're using your Facebook identity to access a new thing and this supplies new data to the social graph in facebook so they are growing with every user and if you just take one piece just like the so only the social graph out of it or only one only the identity out of it then when, still you cannot grow that big right ingo like so i have a facebook account since 2009 let's just say and i've probably logged into facebook with that login with facebook mechanism maybe a hundred different websites. It's actually scary to think about it. So I've taken my identity. A Facebook like supervisor, and maybe Harry, you have this answer too. Like what type of dashboard are they looking at when they pull up Charlie Shrem? Like what data and relationship mapping does this, do these people have? Like what is Facebook? 
like they actually and this is not just me this is all of us they it's like a god mode in a way right they have all this how will that be different than what we're talking about here in a decentralized world yeah but first of all uh it is even worse than what you just said it's not only that they can look at your data and sell your data but they can also switch your data off so if you are connected to 100 services and this 100 services actually rely on your facebook identity then someone at facebook could have the feeling that charlie Schramm is not a good facebook user at one point and switch it off and then you lose access to 100 services uh, which gives them a, an enormous power right. and this, this is i think even more dangerous than, than spying on your data and, and tracking you. So how would it look in a decentralized world? Well, the, uh, the identity provider would be a decentralized network, which cannot be switched off by anyone because it's not owned by anyone. It is just a blockchain, right? It's, it's like the Kill blockchain is like the Ethereum blockchain or the Bitcoin blockchain. You're not really uh, scared that somebody can switch off uh, the Bitcoin blockchain and your wealth is gone, right? This is not going to happen. So you, you put it on the same platform, on the same type of platform basically like uh we uh, like the bitcoin and the ethereum so it's it's not managed by persons it's it's managed by by a blockchain so you are um you are safe that no one can switch you off this is i think a fundamental right that people should have in the internet if they have an identity that should not be it should not be possible to switch it off because in the real world it's the same thing your identity starts with your identifier your face your fingerprint your, your signature these things cannot be switched off by anyone because they are just yours yours they are tied to your body and not uh, the property of someone else sitting in some room and having access right that's the biggest fear it's like centralized uh centralized <laughs> control over that data do you have anything to well add? and that's Absolutely, that's that's one of the biggest big, exciting things in the in the in the in the in the times that we live, right? Like, uh, blockchain brings a new sort of primitive to uh, 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 this 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 thing. It's a new technological primitive that we haven't had before. Like, if you think about it, like in 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 the past, where can you put data, whether it's identity data or social data, that it ends up not being uh, uh, exploited, right? Like any particular platform that hosts a large portion of this ends up with this idea of like, hey, uh, 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 we don't, we, you know, your data is your data. We're not going to do anything about it. Oh, well, you know, given that we have so many people to do this, maybe we do some aggregate reporting on it, right? Just, just, just informational for the industry. Maybe, maybe we, we maybe we do provide like anonymized individual data sets. And maybe we do, there's this slippery slope yeah. down almost anywhere that you put this kind of data identity data social data it's very valuable as a as a as a facebook or a twitter can can attest to uh, it's extremely valuable and the the desire to exploit it is always only a terms of service a uh, 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 change away no matter where you put your particular data so the ability to trust that where you put it today is also where it will be safe in the future is is a is a fundamental struggle with this this sort of data and you see it happen just over and over and over again where when people deal with this kind of data uh, uh, historically but the interesting thing about blockchain and not all blockchain decentralized blockchain specifically like a hyperledger doesn't provide the same kind of like uh, uh, uh guarantees but a decentralized uh, uh, blockchain creates a new primitive for uh, uh, uh dealing with this kind of data set that's rules based modifying uh uh, uh how the chain itself works is not something an individual company no. can do, right? Like it's, you can't, you can't modify an Ethereum smart contract, no matter how much you might want to, uh, 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 to decide to exploit data tomorrow, uh, based on the fact that you said today that you weren't going to do it. So the rules based approach now that's, it's really hard to do. And we're still very early, I think as an industry overall in, uh, uh this, right? Like, there's the there's the question of bugs. There's the questions of upgrades. All of those sorts of things. But this this idea that this fundamental primitive exists that is different that you can imbue a different form of trust into, is yeah. extremely exciting. And I feel like it's the only way you can really provide a, 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 a actual individual control or ownership of 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 data sets, because otherwise you're always just waiting for the platform or the terms of service to to change their mind and. And the, the the power imbalance there means that you don't you don't have the ability to uh, to control that. There was like Europe has been better with 
with privacy and, and, and not being able to like change the terms of service. There's a, like a lot of rules that protect it, but it's still not enough. I feel like it's never, it's never going to be enough. And I was going to, I have some other questions, but I wanted to, what's, what's interesting to me is that I'm, I get confused. I, I think of like the birth of the social media world around the same time as when Satoshi released the white paper. So let's go back to like 2008. Facebook finally was reading its watershed moment. People were, it got released. I opened up my Twitter account in 2009. Like Facebook and Twitter were like the births of the social media world. But we were living in like this Occupy Wall Street age. You remember like the Great Recession, the world, Greece, Argentina, hyperinflation, like things were getting really bad all over the world. And then like, but and trust was eroding, right? Trust was eroding. But then all of a sudden, we started trusting these like corporations instead of our governments and all these social media companies opened up and we started giving them our data and information and information. And I asked someone the other day, I said, why did we do that? Like, why were we so willing and free and able to just like, they have everything of us, like our lives are controlled by this. And, I, and, and, and the answer was simply, my friend said, he's like, because we were all making money because the, we were all making money from this big tech. We were all making money from all of these companies, Facebook, Twitter, we were all making money and during crazy and printing money and, and, and we went through like crazy bull markets and it makes sense. So do you think, and this is where it leads to my question for both of you guys, this changeover where we're going to be all have using Kilt for our simple sign on and we're going to be. Uh, using your social graph for our relationship mapping, there's going to be decentralized networks, and we'll be able to go and and have you know be, be able to like it, it's all going to be collected where my mortgage information and my social credit it'll all be decentralized but all connected through protocols. Do you think that moment will need to happen due to some like black swan move moment where we all give up trust in corporations, or will this be like a slow where like where Bitcoin and crypto had like a slow growth where people slowly came over. Well, people have to lose trust. Will trust need to be eroded in Facebook for everyone to jump over? Or will it be like a slow friction, frictionless changeover? I would say the trust of Facebook is extremely low. So if you, if you make a, a poll and ask the people uh, if they trust Facebook or if they trust Twitter, you get like 80% uh, of the people actually don't trust it. And of course, they want something else. Um, okay, but how big is the pain actually? Because they still use Facebook, right? They could move over to other things which are much more complicated. They could use PGP when sending emails. They don't do that. So I, I think it's um, it, it's a question of convenience. And the task that uh, Harry and I have is basically to make things so convenient uh, that it is not a difference uh, between uh, the Web 2 and the Web 3 world. So moving to Web 3 means the data autonomy for the uh, for the, for the people, um, and, but the growth of the Web3, was, uh, which we anticipate, I think is going to be a very long road and it's not going to kill the Web2 because when you look at the Web2, uh, it's great, but still there's the Web1, right? You have news yep. sites. News sites are not Web2, they're Web1 because you can't interact, you're just reading. So this, this read web is still existing. The read and write web will not be gone just because there is a web three now i think that it will be a gradual process and it will take quite a while but at one point you will notice that with for example your kill credential you can um, log into 30 different applications without uh, having to use facebook login and without uh, remembering new passwords and you can collect your credentials and use uh, this credential for that service and this credential for that and for this service so it, it, it will become more convenient um, over time because it's growing and we see that it's growing which is good and the same is is, is true for uh, for, for free or for, for, uh, for Harry, um, what they do, because they are, you, you tell yourself, <laughs> like uh, you are uh, integrating more and more social networks there. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with England completely. I think that the, the, the reason that they got where they got was a combination of humans have an innate desire to connect, 
and the ability to do so online at a scale uh, 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 that we've seen yeah. from you know social networking over time has never been seen before. And I think that the two key components there were that utility and then the convenience of it, right? Like Web2, a lot of the early Web2 paradigms, calling something Web2 in a lot of ways, even before we really understood that interaction aspect was about like new UIs and like things that were a lot simpler than just Web1 forms for interacting, right? Like they had the dynamic web pages and mobile apps because you had the iPhone and you know smartphones coming out in that same time frame. So there there is a there is there is a big convenience aspect. So a big thing that we uh, uh, work on in Amplica Labs with the work that we're doing with uh, 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 the the frequency blockchain our integration with the the the, the Kilt blockchain and others is uh, uh, really uh, 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 how can you how can you minimize that friction? How can you make it something that's familiar to the user while still adhering to these new principles. And that's really challenging. I mean, I don't know if you've uh, interacted much in Web3, Charlie, but it's not necessarily always the, the most convenient user experience, right? Some, some, some might even say some of those experiences are user hostile. And yeah. a big aspect of what we've worked on is what, what are ways that you can lower that bar? What are ways that you can enforce the same sort of core principles without necessarily having to make the user do this enormous lift on their own to do it. Because a, a crypto enthusiast, someone that is very interested in the space will go that extra mile. But like, if you're trying to, uh, 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 if you're trying to like really embrace the larger uh, web two style user base, the, the folks aren't going to meet you halfway. You have to, you have to go where they are. Go to them and big, have no friction. Exactly. But friction exactly. is freedom too. But do we want do we want that world where it's like here do this because this is how it's done? Like why, Charlie? Why face? Why am I? Why because this is the way the world works. This is this is the way the internet works. Like what's good about crypto now is that because there is effort required because you do have to understand blockchains and you do have to understand how wallets work and you do have to have an understanding of like when you're when you're using the you know the, the kilt plugin and you're doing simple sign on you have there's an understanding of like what am i doing and how this is, does this work it's like someone once said you don't need to like know how to to how a plane works to fly in a plane i'm like yeah but you need to know how a plane works to fly a plane you don't you have to fly in it so there's two types of users i think will there be two types of users in this like pilots and everyone else or will it just be everyone else we want it to be everyone else you want it to be everyone so what i'm here and what the listeners what we try to do on this show is we try to figure out like how close we are to getting there and what makes me excited is that there's there's so many products and services that you guys want to build that can't be built on web 2 today because we simply don't trust those guys we don't trust those companies anymore like I said, we lose trust but but how cool would it be? And I'll go back to this example for me to give my, my bank access to my Facebook history since 2009 to decide if I'm a good mortgage borrower. They would love that, but they don't trust. There's no coordination that data with web two. So using your integration and kill that world is so close. Yeah. Well, I think I think a big aspect of this is from a from a user standpoint is, you know, I didn't I didn't understand everything about like uh, uh, crypto and blockchain that I uh, uh, understand today in a single day. Right. Like there was a journey that I went on and, you know, I come from a software development background. So the the, the way that I interact with this uh, uh, ecosystem was on a more technical level where my interests were was at a more technical level but i think every user at some at, at some point in order to become sort of a web3 user and have that understanding has to go on sort of this journey and one yeah. of the things that we talk about a lot at amplica is we really embrace the the concept of web 2.5 not from a dumbing down blockchain and crypto and the principles involved there but as the 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 the, the stepping stone to web3 for the for the average user bringing them along on this journey what are the steps that c allow people to engage in 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 these kind of core concepts and principles how can they learn how can they explore how can they uh, 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 find where the value is for them in this new in this new space 
And I think that I think that recognizing that there's a journey there, that it isn't a snap of the fingers, not not that anybody's saying it is, but like when you think about it, like the journey that the average user has to go on to understand the space, understand the differences, right? They've spent many years learning what Web2 is and what the guarantees are, or in some yes. cases aren't. And the anger didn't come day one. People were excited about Facebook and Twitter in the in the in the mid aughts, right? They but I remember, yeah. The, 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 as they learn more and understand more, the 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 tone changes, right? And in the same sort of way, I think to be able to embrace this new ecosystem and these new ways of doing things is a journey that you have to bring the users along with, right? Like there's an education component, there's an awareness component, there's just at the core an understanding component. And we can't assume that everybody's gonna at you know some point in you know mid-2023, as an example, all have this epiphany and that that understanding. So our our goal is meet users uh, 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 where they are and bring them bring them along on this journey with us. Like principles led, self sovereign based, but like that that's really what we see as the the core aspect here is building that awareness, that involvement, and that sort of understanding. So what's great about Web three here too, and I what people don't understand is that when you do that and you bring a user into Web three that's also Ingo's user, and that's also someone else's user. So Ingo, are you finding that doing partnerships and integrations are easier in, in this industry now? Because I know you also came from like a software development and, and Web2 background too, Like, but now it's probably easier because when people understand Web3, they understand that one user can be someone else's user. You guys don't need to keep information siloed and data siloed where it's like you have to fight for the, for the same users. Yeah, I think in the in the Web three world, we actually we find a lot of like minded people because we all go towards this idea of uh, hey, the platforms may not have been the best idea. Let's try to find uh, solutions which are uh, feasible, which are decentralized, and which are convenient enough so that people can jump on them. Um, and then I think one of the one of the aspects obviously is that we uh, can use our users together, which is uh, which is good for growth. I think when the real growth of Web3 starts, it will uh, be exponential because of what you just said, uh, like, like uh, we all growing the users together. Some users come over through yeah. um, uh, through the frequency blockchain, some uh, through the kill blockchain, and there will be others uh, which we connect there. And uh, this is going to, yeah, the, the growth factor when it starts is going to be fantastic. Do you think that like it matters being in a world where we have multiple blockchains and multiple protocols or like this in the future, the Web3 user won't care or know the difference between one blockchain or another. It'll just be like one user. They shouldn't. Uh, so it would be horrible if we have those differences because people are not interested in the underlying infrastructure. So when, when what we have to understand as blockchain builders is we just make infrastructure. We're not making products for the end user. We're making infrastructure like the internet, like HTTP. No one really cares if there's HTTP or HTTPS or whatnot uh, behind, they want to see your website, right? Um, and and the, this is the important thing, that they, that the website is delivered and that the identity is there. And if it's, if this is today open ID or whatnot, they don't know that, they, that those protocols are below that and they don't want yeah, to know. Point. We have to be we have to be absolutely agnostic um, for for blockchains and for ecosystems as well. It's not uh, it's it's not going to be like oh this ecosystem wins and the other ecosystem loses. What we have to find is ways that we can interact between those state machines, uh, which are blockchains, um, without centralized. Um, components in it, which is a huge issue we still have in the blockchain world, that we do have bridges, uh, bridges are centralized, bridges get hacked, bridges yeah. are not the best idea. Uh, there's many projects or uh, many, many um, very intelligent thinkers um, currently working on solutions for that. Now, um, Harry and I don't have the problem because we are in the same ecosystem and this, the communication there is pretty easy and it's, the ecosystem is built for communication. So we, uh, so we don't have that big, big challenge, but there's other ecosystems out there which we have to uh, connect. And uh, we see that uh, very intelligent people start working on these challenges. And for the end user, if the Web3 is going to be successful, there's no difference between Ethereum Polka dot killed whatnot. They don't I love see that. Yeah. 
that's that's really great and it's not just about like people in the industry like i remember we used to say like banks shouldn't be afraid of bitcoin they should work with bitcoin and those few financial institutions that work with bitcoin are really smart do you see big tech working on their own web3 projects are you jaded by that are you saying what are those guys doing how could they be building their you know a business model that would defeat them? Well, if I can answer that, so we don't see it. So we saw with Facebook, we saw those ideas with they the tried, yeah. Uh, and they didn't really succeed. Um, uh, I don't see anything coming from Twitter. Maybe you ha you have something. I know that uh, and that Microsoft is uh, very engaged in the DID and uh, uh, VC. Yeah, I saw that world uh, which is good uh, it's not bad uh, it's not uh, killing anyone it's just uh, they are we we know that we need to work together with those guys because uh, we as a small blockchain project we cannot actually fight people like facebook who are identity providers without the help of the big ones and if we sit together and standardize how digital identity looks together which actually happened from 2017 to 2023 uh, the standardization process for, uh, for dids and verifiable credentials together with companies like ibm and microsoft this is actually a very good sign that we have those guys in because it's going to make the growth much easier because if you can also use them in Microsoft applications. Of course, that's much better than if you couldn't. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point, because that was kind of like my last question is like how like like people are so ingrained in how they do things. How do you bring them over? But I think those few big tech companies that get the message will help usher in people too. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw like I think that uh, uh, in the web in the web two world, you had uh, some set of existing technology players kind of come forward into that space. And then you also had new players sort of arise. And I think that Web3 will be, you know, something similar. There'll be some existing big tech companies that come forward and sort of get it and are able to, you know, sort of understand the new paradigm and and uh, uh, work in and embrace it. And I think that you have a, a, a set of new companies that will arise that will fill and, you know, sort of like uh, uh, fill that fill, fill the gaps in the areas for folks who don't come forward. I think that over time, the growth of companies is a sign of the the success of, of the space. I don't know that they necessarily have to rise to necessarily the same heights that we've seen in the Web2 world. I think that there's a lot of uh, uh, based on control of data and other sort of centralization aspects, things that have made a very, very small number of players get very, very large and sort of yeah. dominate the space. I think one of the hopes is that you can have successful, uh, 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 you know, like uh, uh, at both a user level and a business level uh, 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 participants in the space without necessarily having to achieve the sort of Facebook or Microsoft uh, 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 level of success from, you know, like sort of the, the centralization forces there. I think that in a more decentralized world, you can have a larger ecosystem of somewhat smaller players here that can all be successful. Yeah, money and data centralizes. That's just the way it works. And so it's, we've yet to see if our industry, every industry has its behemoths. It's got its biggest players. It's interesting that as a player gets really big, our community almost like, like has its own wildfires. Like it brings that, when a, when a mining pool gets 51%, the community brings it back. When a crypto company gets too big, they either scale back or fall apart. Binance is trying to not fall apart. They're laying off people to scale themselves back. This industry is like the anti-leader. Remember when Elon Musk tried to become like the Bitcoin hero or Jack Dorsey, the community resented that. There's like, so it would be great if we're an industry without big behemoths in the future, but you guys give me a lot of excitement for that. So Ingo Rube, Harry Evans, thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it.